people watch fast networks like cool we had a show on there last year we have an app nfl plus um people are will watch on the cw for inside the nfl which is a awesome show which i always watch cool put football in there prime video like let's do it thursday night football people will find it The NFL Draft to Pick is in. It's streaming now on the Roku channel. For those who haven't seen it yet, what can fans expect from this documentary? Uh, it's it's so awesome. I mean, it really yeah. is fantastic. Um, and I'm not just saying that because I'm in it, although I am in it and my right. part is great. Yeah. Um, it's basically everything behind the scenes that you sort of would hope to know about the draft, right? Like every year, you know, there's – there's draft surprise. Let's say there's a trade every yeah. year. There's a trade like this one. The bills jumped up two spots. They took a really good tight end and everyone's like, obviously the Cowboys wanted a tight end. They jumped him. Well, we get to go inside the Cowboys draft room and see that here's who they were really selecting between. Here's who they really wanted. And like that behind the scenes is so fun and awesome. Um, I think it's, it's rare and it's great. Um, you know, my part, I love the draft. I mean, I really, really love the draft. I love all parts of it. Um, I love the preparation. I love getting all this information and then being like, all right, anything could happen and let's just, let's go. And a lot of times anything does happen. Um, And I like that part of it. And the fact that I kind of got to share like why I like it and how I do what I do, I think was really fun. Um, I'm glad that, you know, like when I agreed to do it, I was a little nervous because I have a lot of private conversations and I was like, as long as they can only hear my side, I'm fine. Um, But also I wanted to make sure that people could see like why I like it so much. And I think, you know, that craziness and that fun really comes out in the documentary, you know? Absolutely. And the four teams that are um, featured in this series, in this documentary is the Panthers, Cowboys, Jaguars, and Colts. And what's interesting when I was watching it, and I remember watching the draft where the Houston Texans made that big trade, um, you see a little bit of what went into it in this documentary. But in hindsight, should the Houston Texans, and no one knew what the Houston Texans were really going to do, but should the Houston Texans uh, been a little bit featured, a little bit more in this documentary? Well, I mean, you know, if we knew they were going to be the the story of the draft, but yeah. I, I think you know, it, it's interesting because I think they are, they're featured a lot. Um, yeah. And I think I hopefully will f- kind of fill in some of the background of why everything happened. But like, you know, there was a scenario that we talked about a couple of days before the draft, which is the Texans taking CJ Stroud. And I was pretty confident that's who they were taking it to. Um, a lot of people, you know, were not, I was, but you never really know. Like you, you never know who's right until you see it play out. And there was another scenario where, you know, we talked with Daniel Jeremiah, who ended up doing this in his mock draft before the draft about could the Texans trade up to three. Um, and it's like, seemed kind of crazy, but makes a lot of sense. I mean, they accumulated all this draft capital, use it on really good players. Um, and I thought that was, you know, I thought that was such a cool thing. Um, I thought it was perfect. And, you know, you could see my reaction, yeah. which they thankfully bleeped out. <laughs> it was shocking. Uh, and that's, you know, one of the great things and that their trade talks with the, you know, Cardinals had been kept quiet. So only those in the room knew and to see a play out in real time was really just awesome. And you mentioned how much you enjoy the draft, how much you love the draft. And obviously this film shows um, your role when it comes to NFL draft coverage. But as an insider, are those three days the busiest days for you in the year? Um, you know, I would say busiest, probably not. Yeah. Um, because at some point, you know, like you get all this information. Basically what I do is I go through my phone and I call everyone I know. Yeah. I write down all the names and I call everyone I know and I gather information and I make a big, um, basically a big word document with all my notes and I go through and I plan everything. And at some point there's only so many phone calls you can make. So like you get to like the, Monday or Tuesday of draft week. And I'll, you know, I always still call people, check in what's going on. Um, at some point there's no new information. Right. Mm-hmm. So you just say like, well, these guys need a pick and then they pick and that's really intense, but that's not 
it's only like a three hour, four hour window. Free agency is basically like all hands on deck, no sleep, 5 a.m. You know, the week before all the way through that Friday, I'm like not a human. It's just mm-hmm. work. Um, and it's really fun and it's crazy, but it's also misery because it's so wild. Um, so that's probably the craziest stretch of my year, I would say. Now, one of the things I also liked about this film is you eating the Kansas City barbecue while you were working. So, um, you know, but in reality, how long are those days during NFL draft coverage and how good was the barbecue? Barbecue is great. Yeah. Um, I love KC barbecue. Um, I went to Joe's KC, um, had an awesome meal there, ordered basically everything on the yeah. menu. It was awesome. Um, their burn ends are great. And then I had, you know, there was like a barbecue fest going on. I remember talking to my producer. I'm like, Hey, like if you want to do a thing on the, you know, barbecue on air, like I would love to do it. And he's like, yeah. He goes, I don't know. I don't know if we'll use it. It's like, but if you want to have them deliver you food, like that would be fine. I'm like, perfect. So I had them deliver me food. It was so great. Um, I ate so much of it. Um, and then they delivered enough where like we were able to feed the whole crew. Nice. Um, so like you could see, I'm, I'm like, everyone like get some, come on. Cause there was so much of it. Um, you know, those days are, are very long. You sit in the chair like this the whole time mm-hmm. and you really can't get up because you just don't know what's going to happen. Like I try whenever I'm out to whatever people want pictures, whatever I always take always, um, and you can't during the draft because like I literally get up from my chair, run to the bathroom, run back. And cause like things could happen at any moment. And it's like, Ian, we're going to you now. So like you never have time. So that's the only time. And I'm like, I can't do anything. Cause I'm like, I have to get up, get to where I'm going, get to my seat, be ready to go. So you can't get up for meals. So I was like, bring me all the barbecue and I'll eat as much as humanly possible. And that's what I did. Of course. And NFL draft the pick is in comes at an interesting time for the NFL because it enters its new co- new TV contract, um, and and it comes when you know it seems like the NFL is kind of spreading its wings when it comes to um, being seen on different networks and different streaming services. You know, you see quarterback on Netflix. Inside NFL is going to premiere on the CW this fall, and then of course wow. there's Thursday Night Football on Prime Video. Even though that premiered last year, they were able to premiere that a year early. Um, you know, could we see more NFL content on different networks and streaming services down the road? Yeah, it's coming. Um, and you know, I think the NFL has really been, I feel like at the forefront of like, what, what else, where else will people watch? And yeah. like, you know, I think the only thing I think the NFL sort of like the NFL, the officials care about is being available to as many people as possible who want to watch football. And what we found is, the more different places we put things, the more people will watch. Yeah. So people watch fast networks, like cool. We had a show on there last year. We have an app, NFL Plus. Um, people are, will watch on the CW for Inside the NFL, which is a awesome show, which I always watch. Cool. We'll put football in there. Prime Video, like, let's do it. Thursday Night Football, people will find it. It's like there's so many different frontiers, and I don't know where it's all going to end up. But, like, the world is so specialized now with different channels that, like, I think people are used to being, like, I want to watch this, so I'm now going to go to this streaming service or this app or whatever it is to watch it. Um, And the NFL has really taken advantage of it. Um, And I think we all sort of have to because that's where the world is going. Of course. And speaking of NFL Plus, you are going to be on a new show on uh, that streaming service and NFL Network called NFL Insiders. What can you tell us about that show? Uh, we did the first episode on Tuesday after cut down day. Mm. Um, I don't have to wear a tie, which is great. Nice. Um, I'm not allowed to wear a t-shirt like I'm wearing now. So yesterday I wore a shirt with buttons, which we led to a big discussion about whether or not that is actually a t-shirt, which I would contend it's not. Um, it's very loose. It's very fun. It's basically just me hanging out with my buddies, Mike Garifo and Tom Pelissero talking about football. So it's basically like a show. If you just took our group chat, and put it on a streaming service. Um, I legitimately enjoy it. Um, it's so much fun. And it's just us talking about news. So I thought it was a great idea. Like I'm, you know, I I look forward to it every day. Um, I think it's going to be really fun. It's on, you know, basically 
uh, 12 to one on NFL plus and, you know, one to three on NFL network. And I think people are really going to like it. Of course. And as we enter the 2023 regular season, there's going to be some interesting storylines. And I know you covered pretty much all of them, but what's the one storyline you look forward to seeing playing out? Um, you know, I, there, there's a lot of like off the field stuff, like contracts and stuff, which I'll be right. You know, I'll be happy when those are over. <laughs> but I think on the field, like there's just teams that I'm wondering, like, are they going to be good? Like, are the Denver Broncos going to be good? They might be good. Got plenty of talent. Like, are they going to be good? Um, and I'm really curious. You know, I think that's going to be interesting. Um, you know, how many of these rookie quarterbacks are going to be ready to play? And how good are their teams going to be? There's a lot of different on the field storylines of like, how good are these people going to be um, that I always absolutely love, love to figure out. Of course. And I think one of the interesting storylines for, you know, this season is the Kansas City Chiefs. Can they go back to back, be the first team since the New England Patriots in 2003, 2004? But if they win this Super Bowl, can they be the next uh the next big dynasty like the Patriots were in the 2000s and the 2010s. Yeah. I, and I don't see why not because the chiefs have a lot of the same philosophy that, you know, those Patriots had, which is like, we got our core. We will keep those guys, you know, and that obviously Patrick Mahomes is at the center of it. And then if there's guys who, you know, like Tyreek Hill wants a new contract, that's okay that it's not going to be us that we're going to give to him, but we're going to take the draft picks and we're going to make use of that. We're going to build a defense around Mahomes. Like they are really good at saying like, we're going to keep our guys, but if Tyron Matthew has to leave, that's okay. Um, and I think that's the right mindset because you can't, you know, the other way you could do is you just pay everyone. And then at some point you end up like the Rams where you're like, all right, we're just going to clean all this out. Um, so I think the chiefs have the right mindset and, you know, I think they're already looking at, you know, being a, either being a dynasty or being a position to be a dynasty, which, you know, for those of us who like watching great football teams is a lot of fun. Of course. And one last question for me before I let you go is, you know, there's always going to be a team or two or three that surprises um, when it comes to what they did last year from what they do this season. Do you, do you, which teams do you see kind of being that dark horse team, making a surprise run, coming out of nowhere and possibly make a deep playoff run and possibly making the Super Bowl? Um, You know, that's, that's always so hard because you can yeah. end up on, you know, old takes exposed. Um, <laughs> I think among the teams that I would say are probably going to be better than people think, I think the Falcons are like a big and tough team. You know, if their quarterback is good enough, you know, they're going to run the heck out of the ball. Um, they're going to be real physical. You know, I think the Falcons are going to end up um, pretty good. I would say the Saints, to me, would probably be in that category. They do not have a great division. Um, they're going to yeah. play like crazy on defense. And if Derek Carr is pretty good, a little better than he was last year, um, I think the Saints are going to be in position as well. So those would be two teams I'd probably give you to watch. Yeah, I'm actually based in Atlanta, and all the talk has been about how the Falcons are going to improve from what they've done the last two years, especially what they've done in free agency and in the draft. So it should be pretty exciting. So I'm looking forward to this season. Ian, thank you so much for your time. I really do appreciate it. Again, congratulations on NFL Draft to Pick is in. Congratulations on NFL Insiders, and have fun this season. 